Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we have another teardown video. Uh, but before we start, can you do me a big favor and please give me a like. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a whole lot. Okay, today we have a, a pretty old Snap-on. This is a Snap-on L710. And the date code here, this is from 1960. And a look at the profile. The handle. This ratchet is pretty well worn. Here, <laughs> looks like somebody slipped with the welding gun and welded part of it the switch Okay, let's take a look inside. These are the screws. Just press it, press it up, and out comes the plate. Typical snap-on type plate. Nice and thick. They always have thick plates. It's pretty hefty. Here's the gear. Has 32 teeth. There's a closer look at the teeth. This one has like kind of a Strange ball detent. <clears throat> it wasn't peened in from the from the front here. It looks like there's a plate. They pressed in a plate in the back. Let's see if you can see the plate. You see the round? You barely see it. The roundness here of the plate. It's probably, they dropped it in from this side, put the plate in the spring, and didn't bother painting it. Yeah, there you can see it better, a little bit. Okay, what I usually do to take these paws out is I take a small punch. And a little hammer. And it comes right out. I 
I did this one before and I didn't I didn't pin it in place real tight so it's probably easier than what somebody would who would do it for the first time would probably experience but they usually come up pretty pretty easily and does it feel like coming up no because sometimes uh the little switch will separate from the from the square part there it'll slide off but that's the switch pin you see it's a little crooked from <laughs> probably being banged out a, a few times Okay, here's the paw and the inside of the mechanism. See, it has that ring the snap on uses. I'm not going to punch that out, but you can, you can see it here. I guess that's pretty smart to save on the wear and tear here. So you can just, once it grinds down or there's too much wear and tear, you can pop out this ring and just put in a new one and it'll be true again. Okay, let's take out the pole. What I do is I just center it. Pull it out. Okay. I center it because there's a groove in here. See this groove that the ball rides in. So I center it so the ball rides here so I'm able to take it out. If not, the ball is going to, the ball and the spring are going to get caught when I try to pull it out. If it's if it's tilted, so when it's centered, it's it's at the apex there, and it and it pushes down the the ball and spring, allowing you to take it out. But that's the pole. This is the switch side, cause it's square. That's the pin side. Two teeth paw. Okay. There's your ball. And spring so what your spring looks like it's kind of strange that it's kind of conical it's it's like a cone almost at the end it's very narrow and it's kind of chunkier or, or thicker in the middle and that narrowness doesn't help putting the ball on top and holding it down when you put it back together let's look inside where the pole fits in the hole of the spring 
Okay, you can put it back together. You take your, your ball bearing spring, you put it back in. Okay, this could be a little tricky. You take your ball bearing. Helps if uh, you have a magnetized screwdriver to hold it in place. And you try to press it down into the hole and get it in there. And you hold it down. Oops. There goes the screwdriver. Now take a small screwdriver and hold. Hold the ball bearing in there. And grab the pole. Ooh, there you go. Wow, I got lucky. <laughs> I hear there's a tool for this. It's kind of like a flat piece of metal, and you stick it in there to hold the ball down so you can get the, the pole in. Unfortunately, I don't have that. But uh, if you have a small screwdriver and you push the ball in, and you hold it down. You position your paw into that cutout and you press it in. You should be able to do it. And you gotta make sure that that lip, make sure it's like straight because that lip for the, for the switch side of the paw has to fit. See how there's a lip there? Has to fit in that hole. And it, once the lip, it's in the hole there, it kind of holds it. So you could pretty much switch it back and forth. And, let's see. and it'll, it'll stay in there. You see? So. Yeah, that's the, the challenge is to get that lip in the hole there. When you're putting the pole in, or it's gonna, if not, it's gonna, it might, <laughs> might turn out kind of cockeyed and it's gonna be a problem. So I try to keep the ball and the spring pressed in there as flat as possible until I get that. That fit. That fit there. Get that in that round part. Okay, and the rest is pretty simple. Let's take your gear. Pop it back in. switch press it back in okay it press it press through and you see it you see it sticking out a little bit so, see how it sticks out a little bit there over the over the pole the little brass part Now that, that you take a small like take a 
get like a small ball hammer like this and you on a, like a hard surface or harder surface and you just go around and pin it in place but I'm not too worried about that right now so I'll just leave it at that until until probably <clears throat> I'll probably pin it better later and you take your plate Put it in position, turn it over, get your screws in, check to see if it works. the total teardown of the snap-on L710 from 1960. So long and take care.